B. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to start it now. Go and for it. I'm just going to go, like, say, say my like favorite line from a song ever. <laughs> right? Ready? I can show you the world yeah, you of gaming. <laughs> Black Oni. Game. Can game shimmer? Can... Yeah. I know that they can be shining and they're splendid, but I don't know if they can shimmer. They can shimmer if it's... Isn't there a game called like Shimmering Blade or something like that? There is. Ha! Called... See? Win. If you hold up a fucking uh, PS3 disc to the light and shake it back and forth, it shimmers. That's true. Yes. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, everybody at home on YouTube and on iTunes to the Black Oni Podcast, episode 8. 8? And wow. Yeah, we're up to 8 now. This is crazy. <laughs> Shit just got real. <laughs> <laughs> I want to introduce you all. If you've seen the other episodes, you might recognize your homie D. What's up? And the 1KK. What's going on? But you might not recognize Miss Ch- Chazane. Hi. <laughs> she is the newest addition to the Black Oni podcast. Hopefully, we'll have her on more than just this one time. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> if she hates it, then we're like, all right, fine. Leave us. <laughs> so... For the first part of what we do at the Black Oni Podcast, we do the uh, 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 icebreaker, which is the icebreaker. Um, <laughs> so the question of the week is, <clears throat> if you can choose to have one video game character come to life, who would it be? Shit. <laughs> yeah. You guys weren't ready for this. I read it last night, too, and just didn't, didn't process an answer. It's a mad hard question because there are like so many good characters out there. I knew. I know. Okay, the one person I wouldn't want to come back is like fucking either Wesker or <laughs> or Kratos. Those are two people I wouldn't want to be alive in real life. Cause... All right, that makes sense. Okay, cool. I think I would want to have Mega Man come to life. Okay. Yeah. That's legit. <laughs> yeah. That's legit. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty cool. There was um yeah. there was this game that w- that got canceled called like Mega Man Maverick Hunter something something that was supposed to be coming out for PS3 and PC and 360 where it was like Mega Man in the real world setting. Yeah. And Whoa. like he wasn't like anime, he was like a cyborg like he looked like a, a small transformer mixed with Iron Whoa. Man. Mm. It was That's awesome. Nice. I'd canceled? like Sonic the Hedgehog to come to life because I would love to hang out with like a really fast talking hedgehog. That would just be awesome. <laughs> I'm also not sure if he'd still be hedgehog size or if he'd be like up to my knees. I don't know. <laughs> that would be kind of scary. Because <laughs> if you compare him to like like Doctor Robotnik, he's like half the height of Robotnik, which makes him like a three foot tall hedgehog. Either way, he's oversized for a hedgehog and really short <laughs> for a human. So it's like that awkward in between phase. <laughs> and I would just love that. I would love. For the Sonic to be my best friend, we would hang. That's legit. That is so like, legit. You'd be like Chris from the Sonic X. You're like, hey, Sonic. He's like, ha ha. right past like the Sega Genesis commercial. That was the best ever. Fucking <laughs> nuts. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh... I'd have to say my person that I'd want to come like alive or to life would be have to be Laura Croft because she has been like my childhood idol. Like, cause you know she was a girl, she was badass. Being a female gamer, I totally looked up to her. So, mm. if I could spend a day with her, that'd be awesome. That would be kind of cool. I mean, I, I guess I have different reasons for wanting Laura Croft to be alive, <laughs> but <laughs> but that would still be awesome. <laughs> Do you prefer the Laura Croft that we have now or the one that you grew up with? No, definitely the one now. The one before, I was kind of like going back and forth between her because she was, I felt like she was more built for men just because she was so like, what's the word I'm looking for? She was so like, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> she was so like fake looking, but now today she looks like a real person, you know, someone that you would actually see like out in the streets and stuff. So mm. That's legit. I agree. I mean, I like both versions, but I do prefer this one more. She's, yeah. She seems like a lot more grounded, and it's a much more visceral experience when you have when you're playing through her game now. As right. Before it was kind of like, yeah, you know, fighting <laughs> dinosaurs, shit, whatever. <laughs> um, so my first 
my first thought of who I wanted to come to life was Morgan. Um, Morgan Ainsley from Dark. What the fuck is that? <laughs> my phone. Your alarm on. Anyway, I was, worried your, I was worried your house was going underwater. Yeah, like, right. Like, like, is there the something I should know about in Boston right now? Like, <laughs> uh, we're just heading to Rapture. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> going to Utopia. It's all good. You know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> my first, okay, so my first Morgan. thought was to have it be Morgan, but when I think about it more, she's a succubus and she'd steal people's souls. So it's probably <laughs> not yeah. a good thing to have. Or sex. But. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it would be worth it. <laughs> That's how they do it. They, yeah. they fuck you and kill you. I mean, hey, it's Morgan. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but I think, I mean, I'm going to go with a typical response. Solid Snake, he's the fucking shit. And if we had Solid Snake around, we would have a lot less conflicts in this world. Because he would just be fucking shit up all the time. <laughs> until he gets old. Wasn't he, wasn't he born like technically out of conflict? So wouldn't we have more conflicts before we have less conflict? <laughs> yeah, that's why Mega Man's here. He's gonna take out those giant robots. Don't worry, Snake. You can rest easy. Hey, man. He's he's not old in this world. He's still young and kicking, and completely okay. still badass. All right. <laughs> Oh man, you just like you just ruined the podcast now. Like I don't even know where to go from here. <laughs> that, that's why you made an outline, and we have questions. <laughs> oh, good point. Good point. <laughs> Moving on to the next part. <laughs> um, so in the gaming section, my question to you guys is: What have you been playing this week? And of the games that you've been playing, what one game would you give a, a basic review uh, review on? Pass, rent, buy, or must buy? I've uh, I've been replaying Dragon Age again for like the twentieth time, uh, but aside from that, because we're talking about newer games, I'm playing the new Ducktales, the new Ducktales a lot. Yeah, which is so fun. Like it's super nostalgic. Uh, they got the original voice actors back. Nice. Um, it is brutally hard though. I heard, like, like brutally hard. It's so frustrating, um, and I feel like it isn't the longest game. I'd say Rent, but it's a digital game, so it's really cheap. So just buy it. <laughs> That's legit. Yeah. I, um, I, there was a live stream I saw for it, Max Level Gaming. There's, shout out to Max Level Gaming. You guys are awesome. Um, I'm actually, next week, you're going to be seeing Malik Forte, who's a member of Max Level Gaming, on the podcast. So I just kind of ruined the surprise for you guys at home. But that's Woo! another exciting thing happening with the podcast. Um, but they did a live stream, and one of the people was playing DuckTales, and they just, she just stopped because she just kept dying like every two seconds. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've tried to play like the same level ten times, and I just finally managed to beat it yesterday. <laughs> like, it's so hard. But the the weird thing is too, I'm playing it, and I remember like where all the secret passages are in every level because it's exactly the same as the Nintendo. Wow, which is really cool. Yeah, that's like almost twenty years ago. Like, 1989. Okay, not quite. 20, like, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's. I never played the original Ducktales, so I don't really have the nostalgic thing going on there but um what about it also occurred to me how strange the premise of that show is one it's a city full of ducks that don't wear <laughs> pants and can talk they but two shirts. and this is what's even weirder like the main character is a millionaire like 60 year old scottish duck who's made his fortune by like treasure hunting the world and he still does it with boss. his like prepubescent <laughs> nephews it's very weird it's very, very weird. Yeah, if you try to, <laughs> to come up with that idea nowadays, I don't know. <laughs> it wouldn't be as, uh, as cute. Have, have you seen scientifically accurate DuckTales? I have, yes. Yeah. <laughs> is this a video or is this like a meme or something? No, it's a, it's a video. It's pretty bad. It, it, like, it ruined DuckTales for me, <laughs> personally. <laughs> I'll, I'll post it in the fucking chat feature. You guys can see it. Yeah, I'll have to link that in the description below. Or in the annotation from my face. Um, so I told you guys earlier, but I've been playing Shin Megami Tensei 4. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not a fan of the Shin Megami Tensei series. This is like my first Shin Megami Tensei game except for Persona 4. Mm-hmm. And I like Persona 4 a lot. 
for the story and like the way you could interact with characters and things like that. Mm-hmm. But um, Shin Megami Tensei 4 was not my game when it, when I first started playing it. Like uh, after I got to like level five, where I could start doing some damage to the enemies and not die every two minutes, then I uh, started to actually like the game. But um, as far as pass, rent, or buy goes, if you're new to Shin Megami Tensei, I would say rent the game first. Um, or you can just straight up pass and play a Persona game. Okay. <laughs> like Persona, All right. Persona 4 is a good substitute for Shin Megami Persona Tensei 4. F- Persona 3 is really good too. So Yeah, I have that. Um, my friend let me borrow it. I haven't played it yet though. Yeah, I heard so, good yeah. things about Persona. So I'm, ex- I'm excited to kind of get into those games, but... <laughs> There's a lot of games I need to catch up on. Yeah. <laughs> there's, um, there's, I've been playing a bunch of stuff lately. I just finished Dragon's Crown, and I'm going to do a review on that. How long did it take you to finish? <laughs> I mean, I've only been playing it for like six hours, and I'm most of the way done, so. Yeah, I mean, did you unlock multiplayer yet? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say, after you unlock multiplayer, it's like another five or six hours, but like, you have to wait so long to unlock multiplayer in that game. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, it's weird. What? It is weird. Um, but, yeah, I mean, aside from that, I've been playing that. I've been playing... I just started playing Tales of Exilia. Um, and I've been playing God of War Ascension and Nino Kuni. Like, those are two games that came out, like, in March or whatever. And I still haven't gotten a chance to get them until, like, just now. So, um, in terms of, like, I guess, segue into the Dragon's Crown thing, I would say buy that game. Um, it doesn't have voice chat in the multiplayer. You have to wait really long to even unlock so those are two really huge faults for me because the game looked like before it came out it was like oh this is a multiplayer loot system with that's like golden axe where you play online with your friends i was like this sounds like a perfect idea this is awesome i can play with my friends and be voice chatting with them and blah 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 like mount some creatures and throw some fireballs and you know watch shit fly and it's like no you can't (laughs) you actually can't do either of those things (laughs) yeah well i mean you can do you can do side by side multiplayer from the beginning Right, like, like you can, you can start the game and have someone on the couch with you. Right, you just have to wait until the game is halfway over to actually play with people online. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. Why yeah. should we accept that? I don't understand. Uh, maybe maybe they're just trying to bring games like that back to their roots. Where it's like you know when you play Golden Axe on the Sega Genesis with your best friend. Maybe they're just trying to do that. Maybe know. they're just being. I think dicks. it might also, it <laughs> might also be that they're waiting until you like unlock all of the gameplay elements. Yeah. Because like you can't get runes until right before that. And yeah. imagine if you're playing with somebody who has everything and you don't, like how confused you're going to be. Well, even even when I had more stuff, I was still pretty confused. Yeah. Like they like for some of the runes, for example, like they give you an option of like four runes you can use and then there's like yep. two on the wall and they don't tell you which one you're supposed to be using to do a certain thing. So you're just like, I'm just gonna press this random one and then this random one and see what happens. <laughs> It's literally what it is. You yeah. just do a thing. I'm going to do a thing. <laughs> and then a thing's going to happen. And then yeah. there's a bunch of things going on. That's the same. Uh, as for me, I'm definitely more of like a PC gamer. Sometimes, I, like I have a PS2 and I have my Xbox, but right now I don't have live, so I've kind of tried to stay away from those games. Mm-hmm. But um, the most recent game that I've been playing this week is actually World of Warcraft. Now, I have, like, a love-hate relationship with that game because, like, I'll play it. Like, I can't wait to get home from work and go on it, and I'll play for hours on end. And then I'll just, like, come to this point where I just, like, I hate this game so much. Like, it's so repetitive. (laughs) It is so (laughs) repetitive. And then, like, a month later, I'll be like, why did I stop playing? Like, let's hop back on there. I forget all my password and stuff. I got to create a new character. And (laughs) it's just, it's a horrible, horrible circle of regret. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, I, awesome. I would honestly, I buy it again. But like I said, it's it's definitely a love hate thing. Like sometimes I wish I didn't buy it, and then sometimes I I'm glad I did. So what's the reason you keep going back to it? I don't know. Like I'll just get bored, and just something about it just keeps me coming back. I mean, I never reach the highest level. I'll get to like, let's say like the highest level. I think right now you can get to ninety. And I'll get to like 89 and be like, I'm fucking done with this game. <laughs> I won't go all the way, like, level. I don't know why. I don't know. It's weird. That's pretty Damn. hilarious. <laughs> you're all the way to 89. You know what? This isn't <laughs> worth it. <laughs> this game is not really my thing. <laughs> you know, 200 hours in. Yeah, 
god. It's just it's aggravating because like people that play the game know what I'm talking about when I say that like a new expansion will come out and sometimes the expan expansions will uh, boost up the level you can level to. And, like, within hours after that expansion coming up, like, everybody will be up at that new highest level. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, I didn't even get a chance to come <laughs> on yet, and everybody's already leveled, so I'm left behind. Like, it's annoying, I'll it's tell you that. that South much. Park shit. That guy just, like, <laughs> sitting there. Wah, wah. Yeah. I think what always annoyed me about World of Warcraft is, like, anytime you need to kill so many of whatever... You always go to the dungeon and there's just like 20 people standing there waiting for it to respawn and kill it first. And you're like, all right, this is going to take me six it. hours and it should take me five minutes. A lot of wow. the time that when that happens to me, I'll ask people like around me just to join the party. So yeah. like if we join the party, all of us will get that kill. But then yeah. you always have that stubborn one that just keeps killing. Like he's already gotten what he needs out of that quest. He just wants to be that guy that keeps killing it and Leroy pissing everybody off Dagger. around him. It's the most annoying thing. Like, I end up rage quitting or going to another character, another realm or something after that start ha starts happening. So, that's I guess crazy. that's multiplayer. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I, uh, I never played any of the World of Warcraft games. Like, when I was in college, a bunch of my friends got, started getting into it. And, like, at the time, I had, like, some Dell laptop that was, like, decent but i was like i'm not gonna game on this this thing's like falling apart like why i can use photoshop on here illustrator and maybe some flash and that's all i'm using this computer for and then i got a mac and i was like well i could do this other stuff <laughs> I, still, I still never did like there's there's so many um mmos i wanted to get into like um sasha you guys will see soon enough um she was like yeah you need to start playing neverwinter nights with me um uh the Dungeons and Dragons thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, I should do that. I was like, oh, but it's only on Windows and I'm using a Mac, so I have to get boot camp and then download Windows. And then, yeah. like, I already am running out of space on my hard drive because of all the videos I'm doing. So, like, that's another thing. So, uh, it's one of those things. But I, I think with, with the next generation of consoles, I'm going to be doing a lot more MMO gaming because they're going to be bringing that on there. Yeah. Um, like, I've said it before, like, I think I'm going to start PC gaming, too, because there's a lot of uh, Microsoft exclusives that I would like to play, like Titanfall, for example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really want to play that, but I don't want an Xbox One for it. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think I'm going to have to make the plunge into PC gaming and, and take the, bite the bullet. Yeah, Anytime never... I start playing an MMO, I'm always like, this is so great. This is so revolutionary. And then I play it for, like, maybe 10 hours and then i'm just like this is the same as every other game just with a different look to it um, wow but. well everquest uh next looks to be insanely cool like i don't know if you guys have looked into that but I've seen a bit of it it's crazy yeah. like it's, it has like this terraforming environmental thing going on like you can traverse the environments a lot easier and like you can create maps i think when like create your houses and stuff like they they give you a lot of freedom to do a lot of things and the battle system looks pretty cool so i might get into that <laughs> it's pretty awesome the, the only mmo i really want to play is elder scrolls online I really yeah that. i want to really play good. that yeah yeah, yeah that, that is, is pretty awesome <laughs> shit like, i want to play that so badly and uh, I got, like, the fucking the beta for Final Fantasy XIV, and I still haven't played that yet, because it's just like, when's Elder Scrolls coming out? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's legit. I've played a lot of MMOs in the past, but I only get to, like, level 25, and then I, like, quit. Like, I'm just, yeah. like, done. Yeah. Yeah, I played, uh, I played the beta for, or the alpha, I guess, for Final Fantasy XIV, Realm Reborn, a bunch of times, and um, it's fun, but you definitely have to, like, there's no party, there's no voice chat in that either. Mm. I think that this is, should be a prerequisite in every game now. It's like 2013. Mm. I'm just saying. It's a damn shame. Anyway, mm. there are some new games. Wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. I almost skipped a, a subject. What upcoming games are you guys excited for the most? Pokemon X and Y. Woo! Woo! <laughs> not even, I'm not even being sarcastic. I That's, know. So fuck. I've said that like three times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm just waiting for this shit. <laughs> yes, dude. That game is gonna be crack. New Dragon I Age, definitely. Ooh, Inquisition. Um, I just I, I played through one and two, uh, like a month ago. I'm playing through one again because I can't stop playing it. But I played through one and two like a month ago, and I was like, I can't wait for three. And then I read a review or a preview, and I was like, that's a year away. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> 
I still haven't played any of the Dragon Age games, so I need to. You are missing out. They are like, they're probably my favorite current gen RPG. More so than Mass Effect. Yes. Well, Dragon Age One, Dragon Age Two is Man, flawed. I heard. Lazy. I heard. Uh, but it's still good. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Shazane? I'm trying to think. Honestly, it's probably going to be the new, like, the Skyrim Online is what I'm actually looking forward to. Nothing else really comes to mind right now, but I don't know. I, I, I'm just wondering what's going to be like like being on multiplayer, kind of like World of Warcraft and everything. I don't mm-hmm. know. See how that works. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> better <laughs> i know i mean it could be awful like it could be like hitting someone and it's just like nope nothing's happening i'm slicing you and throwing fireballs and you're just did you, lagging did out you not see what happened at QuakeCon, man i saw it yeah, looks awesome but it looks great but <laughs> what do you think? it has the potential of not being as good because like you, you have the potential of not being as good don't talk listen, <laughs> <laughs> listen i have potential to be awesome right yeah as is that game <laughs> But, like, I remember my experiences with the PS3 version of the game. And granted, this is just one wait, version wait, of the game. Oh, oh. The, the, the game hasn't come out yet. For you, Skyrim. You know. For Skyrim. Okay. For Skyrim. Skyrim. And for Which Fallout awesome. 3. Skyrim got a perfect score in Japan, so I don't see why you would be hating on that game. I'm not hating on the game. <laughs> I'm just wary because I don't know if we're going to have similar issues with performance, with save files, with... Oh. Quest not working properly. Like that's Bethesda that's makes that's awesome games, but I've experienced a lot of bugs in their games. Yeah. yeah, they make games that are so open world that when they release them, there's still so many glitches. Right. For months. Yeah. And like I'm like I I, I fucking love Skyrim to death. Like I posted on the Black Oni uh the Black Oni Facebook page this this uh, machinima for this fan made film for Skyrim, and it was amazing. Like I love Skyrim so much, but I'm so like wary of bringing this to the online world now where it's like now it's not only affecting your save file but it's also affecting other people's save file if something goes wrong on yours um i don't really see that happening i don't think that's gonna happen I hope no. not. i'm <laughs> assuming there's going to be some big glitch but i don't think that's going to be it yeah i mean i, I see where you're coming from for ps4 and like the console players mm-hmm. but that's why you play on the computer man because the console players won't even be able to play on like the the, the, the PC and Mac servers. They have, they'll have their own servers. Right. Yeah. Well, actually, they're it's talking about us bringing a lot of the uh, online games to like PC servers. So I think PlanetSide, for example, um, is going to be utilizing some PC servers. I think. No, uh, are, are they fucking in coordination with Elder Scrolls Online? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but it's a thought. It's a thought. It's a thought that counts. All right. Yeah. I, you guys, you guys know, I'm excited for Metal Gear Solid 5. Apparently, they just teased that there's some big news coming. And I hope that's some announcement on Metal Gear Online. Because the first Metal Gear Online that they had for uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, that wasn't the first one, but the one I remember the most, it had such potential to be awesome, but the controls did not translate well for online play. It looked kind of sticky, yeah. Yeah, it's sticky and clunky and like... Like when I when I'm trying to aim at something, I want to be able to aim very quickly, and like they only let you aim to like a certain point where you're like, all right, I'm moving at a snail's pace here. <laughs> like, yeah. I would like to shoot this guy who's running across the screen, and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. That game was fun though. It was like, so much fun. Yeah. I hated that like you had to sign in to the PSN, then you had to sign into a Konami ID, and then you had to have a new password for that. And then yep. you had to do that every time you got in, and then you had to like do, you had to like go rappel down a waterfall through a fucking magic gate just to play the <laughs> game. Then you didn't face that shit. Uh, anyway, we have a bunch of games that are coming out and have just come out the past week. Um, Four, Tales of Central, Central Four is out already. I think it, it comes out Tuesday. Comes I think out Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I enjoyed Sinsville the Third quite a bit. Yeah, I just got that. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. A very Definitely. underrated game. <laughs> um let's see. Tales of Exilia, that just came out and I've I've only like dabbled in that a little bit and so far the story is pretty cool, the character interaction is pretty cool, but the the graphics could use a little work. It well, I mean it's it's years old. Yeah. It took yeah. two years to bring it to the US, so Which it's is crazy. 
Yeah. That's going to be in one of our fucking hot topics because Japan, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the whole country in Japan watches this podcast. They should. <laughs> they should. <laughs> hey, Japan, I love you guys, but what the fuck? <laughs> Hashtag Japan. Hashtag what the fuck. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> a game called Stealth Inc. I know nothing about. No one else does, apparently, either. <laughs> DuckTales Remastered, which is what Kev was just talking about for 1KK. Yep. Gone Home. Payday uh, 2. I think uh, Mr. Yarger actually just got a review copy of that, and he'll be giving some impressions of that on pixelbit.com, um, which is pretty awesome. Mario and Luigi Dream Team. That game actually looks really fun. I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't look into it at all because I'm kind of, like I said before, I'm kind of sick of Mario. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You did say that. Yeah. It, it, well, so we recorded a podcast a couple of weeks back and nothing got saved because oh, Skype shit. is fucking stupid sometimes. So, like, now I have to, like, I have to click the stop recording, start recording every once in a while so that it, it'll have everything in case something crashes yeah yeah happens with skype apparently oh shit yeah <laughs> but we talked about like all types of stuff i talked about my frustrations with mario <laughs> in explicit detail yep. I'm, I'm not gonna do it again but what i will say <laughs> is they need to just move on just do other things he's a mascot man they can't move on he's a crash was a mascot for playstation that's true oh, crash is so good until so, he went multi-platform Right, yeah. right, right, exactly. But they, the thing is, they left that alone, at least for a little while. Like, they didn't even put him in PlayStation All-Stars. They're like, all right, we're going to put this, you know, we're going to put this away for a little while. And then when the he time is right. Huh? So he should have been in PlayStation All-Stars. He should have. He absolutely yeah. should have. So should have Spyro. I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm not the mastermind behind all this stuff. But what yeah, do I, I know? Wait, wait. I'm just a guy who plays games and enjoys them. <laughs> They do kind of overkill Mario. Like every other year, it'll come out with a new Mario game. Is this no. guy not dead yet? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> is he not like old and gray yet? Like, can he stop jumping around? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not hating on Mario. I'm just saying. You're hating. <laughs> <laughs> You're hating. Uh, we have Worms Clan Wars. I don't. I don't know. Defender story. I don't know about that either. <laughs> if any of you guys know any of this stuff I'm talking about, please interject. <laughs> <laughs> Betrayer. Charlie murder. Actually, I heard someone talking about that in a live stream. So that I guess that's something to, to watch out for. I didn't look it up. Um, Dream and Unholy Nights. Unholy Heights. Heights, you're right. I yeah. can't read it. Um, and also, I didn't put this on here, but so Splinter Cell comes out Tuesday, I believe, too. And I Ooh. am looking forward to that game because I'm, I'm a big time stealth fan and I'm <laughs> looking for some stealth action to time me over until Metal Gear Solid 5 gets here. So, they need, they need a new tension game. That's what they need. Yes, they do. Oh yeah. my God. What are they thinking? Like, the last one they tried to do was apparently really bad, though. So that's yeah, I heard why, that, too. That's probably why they stopped. Yeah. It was like for Xbox 360, like it looked like it was a PS2 game, and it was just like, just awful. Yeah. I have no idea about any of these games, <laughs> except for Saint Row 4, Mario and Luigi Dream Team, DuckTales Remastered, Worms Clan War. And it's weird because I got like a new Game Informer too, but I'm just not motivated to read that thing. <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> like, for real. I remember I went to GameStop and they they like pressured me into getting the power up reward stone and it was like oh you can either choose to have a pdf of it or have a physical copy i was like why wouldn't you give me the option for both yeah because it cost you nothing to give me the pdf yeah, yeah basically but i i haven't read i haven't read a single one mm. <laughs> like i get all my my gaming news either on youtube or on n4g or like all the other sites that are out there so it's like they already have that stuff ready for me before game informer puts together a magazine the internet is just superior. Yeah. Internet wins. Yeah, man. Interwebs wins. Hold on. I'm going to look for that right now, actually. Wait. It's about to get real. Oh, I love these podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. <clears throat> you good? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so, um, I'm. I might wait until he comes back to say that yeah, he's right there. So he's. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sip on my tea, my lemon ginseng green tea. And that's the hot one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so if I spill this on myself, you will hear me scream. <laughs> <laughs> ah! it'll, be a, it'll be a girly scream. <laughs> okay, so I got it. But I don't think they mentioned any of those games either. This is like the E3 edition. I'm not, I'm not sure if I should have like another one. Cause there's still no, that's, about... that's the most recent one. Really? Oh, is? E3? Yeah. Yeah. Did that happen in July? Yeah, but it's a print publication, so they're oh, yeah. two months behind at all times. Yeah. That's why they, re- they review are games that are already discounted because they were so bad. <laughs> this, is true. this is true. Okay, so yeah, none of those games in there anyway. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> so one of the biggest gripes I've had about this past generation, um, you guys may have heard. I um, mean, I'm sure you guys have had the same issues, I guess. Um, is with the, the the failure rates of the consoles. I mean, the Xbox 360, when it came out for its first three years, it had a 55% failure rate for the console. What? That is insane. That should yeah. never, ever happen. But it happened. Yeah. Um, but now they've... I, I, from what I hear and from what I'm seeing, they have a very low risk for power failure due to uh, power consumption and due to overheating. Yeah. So um, I'm really excited to hear about that, but I'm also wary that like this this is just them them blowing hot air because it's like hey you know we know this is a problem and you know I I, I know the the Xbox 360 when they were going through their research and development knew going into it like hey this is getting kind of hot but we'll probably be fine and it got passed through the FCC or the FIC one of those it got passed through so the console was released. And still, there were those problems. So, who is the who's the one saying whether or not these will not have a lot less likely chance of failing? Because I know Mark Cerny, for example, the architect for PS4, pretty much gave his two cents on that. He's like, "Yeah, there's there's like no chance of this overheating." Well, I mean, they also don't really know for sure until the thing's been out for a few years. Like, right. the 360 had a lot of issues where within a year it broke, but like PS4s have had a lot of issues that didn't show up until they were four years old. PS3, yeah. uh, and there's just there's only so much you can do to predict that, like, before it starts happening. Yeah, yeah I guess that's true. I just think it's sad that, like, with the 360, how, like, everybody knew what the Red Ring of Death was. It wasn't, like, an yeah. uncommon thing. Right everybody now. at least had it once. It's just kind of like, all right, well, that they, console was clearly not developed well. Seriously. Yeah. So you I mean, didn't get an Xbox. Yes. <laughs> it was even brought up when, like, currently uh, the Xbox has sold more units than the PS3, but they've also brought up the fact that they don't know how many of those are people rebuying their Xboxes because they're red ring every year. So, like, the right. same person could have bought five Xboxes. Which is happening. Because it keeps breaking and they have all these games. Right. I think Mr. Yager is one person who's had, like, two or three at least. Yeah. And, I mean... Yeah, I've had two. Yeah, so it's like... <laughs> Like, My PS4 broke, but it broke after like five years. PS4? So. Or PS3. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Too many, many numbers. My PS3 broke, but uh, like I had it for four years. So five yeah. years? Five years. So I can't complain too much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's totally legit. I think uh, my, my, my PS3 died. Um, I think... I think I tortured it a little bit too much because, like, I, at, the, at the time I was playing like a lot of PS2 games as well as PS3 games because it's backwards compatible. Yeah. Yeah. And Metal Gear Solid 4 had just come out, and my PS3 was pretty much on for like 48 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that had a had something to do with the the system Probably. not working anymore. Could be. Um, I just I just remember like waiting. I was living with my mom at the time. Like I was just waiting at the outside, like not outside. I was waiting at the window, waiting for the delivery man to get there. I was just like, this is so stressful. This is so stressful. I want the game right now. I want it so bad. And like I could have just went to the midnight release and got it then, but like I wanted to get the special edition and have it like delivered and then like add this little thing. And then my PS3 died and I couldn't finish the game. I was like, literally what happened to me with Mass chapter. Effect? Mass Effect Three. Like as soon as I got on the Normandy, my PS3 just froze and broke and i had to buy a new ps3 oh 
Which also means I lost everything for saves. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That is awful. I love Mass Effect 3. It was so good. <laughs> so good. Um, <laughs> the next thing we were going to talk about for the last podcast, but because, you know, shit happened. <laughs> um, the bid for greatness allows you to use your PlayStation trophies for real-world uh-huh. items. It's over now, though. Wait, it's not an ongoing thing? No, no, it was like a two-week thing. It ended like two weeks ago. <laughs> no! But also, the average, the average trophy price, it only counts gold trophies. I know. So I have 50-something, which isn't really high, but I'm guessing it's probably about average for people who've had the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, the average thing that was sold, sold for 1,500 gold trophies. Yeah. 1,500. Yeah, like, yeah. games only have one. <laughs> I have a lot of trophies. Only but... gold counts. Oh! <sighs> Shit. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot of gold trophies. I remember uh, seeing the Connor, the Connor uh, costume you can get, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Like, they're, they're actually, like, giving this stuff away for people who just game a lot. And yeah, I was like, the, maybe the I'll lowest, enter for it. And it was like, no. The lowest auction price I saw was 1,000. Yeah, that's true. I, have, I don't know how many gold trophies I have, but I know it's not anywhere near 1,000. Yeah. It's a sad story. <laughs> it's, um, I don't it's... understand how, this meant, how that many people have that many thousands of trophies. That many people just don't have jobs, I mean, that's, and yet that's can it. somehow buy every game to get the trophy. Yeah, sell them I drugs, don't... man. <laughs> Got to sell that ass or sell them <laughs> drugs. <laughs> you know what else? Things. N- Nintendo had like a, a similar program, uh, but you get a uh, Nintendo Play Coins, uh-huh. and that's how you you get prizes and shit like that. But um, they give out like games as prizes and like other small accessories for uh, either any of your systems um and the thing is you have to get become like a platinum member and i was a platinum member last year for their event so i got a free game pretty cool that's pretty uh yeah you gotta get to like 600 coins and the way they do it is uh you go to the nintendo club and you do a survey and um you get like coins based on like how you answered the survey and things like that not really how you answered it, but for completing the survey. Okay. Um, so yeah, I got a I got a free game. Yeah, I got cool. some, I got a free like uh, 3DS case and like a game case from that. That's yeah, cool. yeah. Club Nintendo is really good. I mean, that is one thing that Nintendo does very right. So yeah. <laughs> I guess this is different because you have to pay for it. But PSN, PlayStation Plus is kind of like yeah, they give you free games when you just subscribe to PlayStation Plus. So that's that's a thing, but. I don't. I didn't see any like other incentives outside of just playing the game until just then for that. Yeah. So I, I like I like that they're doing that. And I hope both Nintendo and Sony continue doing that. And I think for if they do what Nintendo does, I think it's a great sort of reason to buy a new game rather than a used game because mm. a used game isn't going to have the code right. that you need to enter to be able to complete the surveys and get coins. Mm. Um, so I think it's just sort of like a nice little extra incentive to buy new and therefore make the company money. That's legit. That's uh, legit. Okay, so I know you all have heard the news of Xbox 180 now. Um, the Connect is no longer required to be plugged in to play Xbox One, and there's now a power button. And there's also inc- an included headset now, whereas before there wasn't. I feel like Microsoft is just confused. <laughs> like I feel like at this point they don't even know what they're doing, so they're just like just trying to appease everyone. So they're just like adding on anything they can think of. Yeah, yeah. this is this is a this is an interesting dilemma that they've kind of put themselves into cuz I think as a result a direct result of the changes that they're making, they they have to delay some of the stuff that they're trying to implement in terms of like getting the xbox one in more territories yeah production and like i don't i mean also they promised before they said that they needed the xbox one needed everything that it had because they wanted to innovate gaming and now like they're getting rid of all of it so they're pretty much saying yeah our console isn't gonna have any innovation it's basically all the things that they've they said when they first released, when they first revealed the console. They're like, "Oh, it's going to do this, and it's going to do that, and it's going to do that, and it's going to yeah. have you know cloud computing because every game is going to be required to be online." Nope, not that anymore. <laughs> and that was that was their biggest selling point was that they were going to ha- every game was going to be able to take advantage of the cloud computing for everything that it was doing. And now it's like, it's not. <laughs> 
yeah. that's totally not. So I, I don't know. I think, I think they should have if they if they had introduced these elements in a more consumer friendly way, then it would have been accepted a little differently. But at the same time, no one wants DRM, so that's a huge big hit on that whole thing, and no one wants to have a, a required connect, even though it could enhance your gameplay in some way. I personally don't need it or want it. But with that said, I am getting a PlayStation Eye because I actually like the move and I've played around with it. And like the thing with the Connect is that it's really cool and the technology behind it is really amazing. But in terms of like gameplay application, I've only seen it work well for dancing games. Yeah. Well, I'll say the same thing for the PlayStation Eye. Like I, I have a PS Move and it's really fun mm-hmm. for sports champions and for dancing games and that's it like it doesn't work at all for anything else well i played it with resistance 3 and i played it with um with i tried it with infinite it's impossible with infinite bioshock infinite oh yeah it's kind of hard like it's impossible to aim and like because you have to hold a full controller and a playstation move controller to do it so you have to like lock one on top of the other it's really really difficult <laughs> so i i i must be like weird then because like i've done both with like with the controller and the move and with the nav controller in the move and like i've played both ways and i'm like this is actually not bad at all and, like resistance for example i have the uh the attachment thing you can have and like this is really cool like i feel like i'm just like shooting stuff with my sharpshooter thing mm. uh, and like I, I thought that was really awesome but like you can't yeah. really do that with connect because it doesn't unless you're holding the controller and then like have your hand out or something and then like I don't know. You can't make a first-person shooter without any way of traversing the area. Yeah. Unless it's going to detect your fingers and just go like this and then go like that. And then... Maybe, <laughs> maybe Sony will reinvent the Power Glove. Don't <laughs> Please don't. <No? laughs> just for Bioshock games. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Death of Crows. <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't know. Xbox One has an identity crisis. That's essentially what I'm getting at. Yeah. They, yeah. they're, they're going to be fine in the long run, but they're going to struggle pretty hard at first. And now with... Uh, did I put this in here? Sony? Okay, so the other news is Sony is working, has worked out a deal with Viacom to offer streamed television to the PS4 without a cable box. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> like, all of Xbox One's major like, selling points are just like, just following. Like yeah. They can't even, like, what what do they have now? They have Titanfall, which is also on yep. PC. <laughs> and this this is the dilemma I had with the first Xbox or the Xbox 360. There was only one game I wanted to play on. Halo. No. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't Halo. I fucking love Halo. <laughs> Me too. It's so good. It was that game Blue Dragon with uh, the, the art by Akira Toriyama? The yeah. That made Dragon Ball? Blue Odyssey? Yeah. No, Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon? Blue yeah. something. There's blue. There's Lost Odyssey yeah. and Blue Dragon. Yes, thank you. But that's, that's the thing. There's going to be like one game you really want to play and then everything else is on PS4. Yeah. Nuts. That's you true. get a Wii U for the kids. The <laughs> wife and the kids, they play Wii U. It's for the children. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo is for the children. <laughs> Nintendo is the greatest. <laughs> ODB, Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> Wu Tang is for the children. <laughs> Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. <laughs> so anyway. I like this. We have we have like the Sony guy, we have the Nintendo guy, we have the PC girl. Well, do you, you play on three sixty as well though, right? Yeah, but not not as often. Not as often. So we have the PC <clears> and then we have <throat> Kevin, you play mostly on PS three, don't you? Mostly. But yeah. I also play on PC. Um yeah, Nintendo system. I have a three DS, <laughs> but I don't ever use it. I might sell it back because it just doesn't I have too many systems, so it just doesn't get played. Yeah. Unless I'm traveling. Yeah. That's a, and if I'm traveling I have a Vita and I get two free games a month on the Vita because of PlayStation Plus, so I think it wins. Boss. It's pretty boss. Yeah. I find funny though, like all these new consoles are gonna start coming out, but I find myself that I like to go back to the old consoles. Like I want to buy like a, a Nintendo again and play the old school games. Mm. Like I'd rather play the old school games than wait for the new games. I don't know. But. I it's, this this legitimacy behind that. I mean, there's certain ga- like. I, go ahead. I just bought all these new games. I bought like Tales of Zillia, Dragon's Crown, uh, and they're all just sitting there because I. I bought them, started them, played a little, and then was like, you know, I just want to play Dragon Age Orig- Origins again for yeah. probably the 20th time. Yeah. Say because orgy. I find that more fun. <laughs> <and there's> no... <laughs> Dragon Age Orgy. 
yeah. Dragon Age orgy. <laughs> I mean, you can. That, that is an happen. option in the game. But... <laughs> Wait, like legit orgy? Yeah, or hot just mess. Like... <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, is it you can you can have an orgy in Dragon's Dragon's Age? Dragon I've Age Origins, played. you can uh you can have three. At so, the same yeah. time. What? At the same Two time. Two at the same time, yes. I need to get Dragon's Age. <laughs> <laughs> What just happened? I, everything <laughs> just happened. I don't know. We went somewhere yeah. very, very dark. Yeah. What just happened? I'm just saying, that sounds kind of awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, this is, I guess, a hot topic for a lot of people. So, I could have put this in either the hot topic or the gaming news section. Either way, I think it's worth talking about. Call of Duty Ghosts and GTA V just unveiled both of their multiplayer. <laughs> and they both... Look really cool. Now, did you guys see any of that? No. Um. Yeah, I did actually. But mm. uh, fuck both those games. <laughs> Woo. Um. No, I just I, I never really picked up on the Call of Duty franchise. Mm. Uh, every game was the same. Like, except this one has like dogs and destructible Dags. environments now. Dags. Huh? Dags. Eggs. Dags. Dags. Okay. Got dags. Dags. Oh, dags. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> I, I think but, I didn't see... Uh, what was that movie? It had Brad Pitt and some other people. I, don't, I, have, I haven't seen an unspecific movie. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. No problem. But, um, yeah, dude. Like, dogs and destructible environments. It's like, big deal. Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3 did that. Destructible yeah. environments. Maybe not dogs. Who cares about dogs? Though? Yeah, I don't care about the dogs. And then um, GTA, like, GTA is cool and fine in its merit. I played GTA 4. I got to, like, the lawyer part, and then it glitched out on me. Yeah. Uh, like, you just wouldn't know. But um, I wasn't, I wasn't really, like, the biggest fan of those series. The, the series. Like... Kind of weird, I know, but all you really do is like kill people, and it's like I want something a bit any game. more, you know. Yeah. So GTA Five does look awesome, and it has so much going on. But I agree with you. Like I look at it, and I'm just like, I've done this before. I don't. Yeah, I mean, you can I play golf. Buy another you can game. scuba dive. You can uh, race other people online. You can do bank heists. I mean, I mean, it's don't get me wrong. That's cool. But I've done all yeah. of that before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what haven't you done in a video game yet, though? That's the thing. Well, I, right. my, I just don't think that there's anything like... You've had sex in a video game. You've killed people with katanas out. in video games. You've danced in video games. You've sang in video games. You've... I, I just always game. think of the Grand Theft Auto games. Like, I love them, but I play them as sort of like time wasters. Mm. I never get super involved. Um, but Same I can Andreas, spend hours though. and hours doing literally nothing. Or playing nothing but mini games. San Andreas was the shit. Yeah. Yeah. That game was amazing. Yeah. I actually made a recent video talking about um GTA about when I mean I wouldn't even play for the quest. I would just play like actually driving around and following the rules. And I was <laughs> pissed one time cuz I was I was driving regularly and then the light just turned red so I slammed on my brake and I like dink a cop car and now I have five stars. I don't even know how I got them. <laughs> I'm just driving through the city, running people over. I'm like, I'm just trying to get away from this cop car. Now I got freaking helicopters and the FBI on my ass. Like, it, it just, it, oh, horrible fender bender went wrong. I can feel, I can see like the whole scenario going on in like in real life. Just like I ended up in the water somehow. I don't even, I don't know. It was just, just, it was a mess. I'd like to see like Grand Theft Auto Four is a massive game. I'd like to see how many hours it takes you to complete it if you don't violate any traffic rules. Oh no. <laughs> I'm guessing it's it's like two thousand. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, like they tattled like one of the things like, oh, it can take you a half hour to get from one side of the city to the other. I don't want that. I want to <laughs> teleport to the fucking objective and play. Like yeah, you probably want to play Saints Row, right? No, not yeah. even Saints Row won't, <laughs> won't even let you teleport to the objective. Saints Row and uh, my biggest problem with Borderlands too is that like you, it takes so long to get to the next place that you have to go to. Sometimes that I just want to. Shoot and loot. Like I just want to do that right now, and you can't. I guess Skyrim you can. Yeah. Just take a pit stop to a strip club on your way there or something. Yeah. (laughs) That's where all the fun is. (laughs) Now with the whole COD thing, though, I 
I, when it was like, when it first came out and it was all hyped up about, I was, you know, one of those first people that went out and bought it, but it just got really old for me. I mean, the campaign, I would enjoy playing more than multiplayer, but with multiplayer, it was just a lot of like team kills and a lot of fighting that I just didn't want to listen to. And it just, and, and then more of those games came out and it was kind of like the same thing. Like, yeah, new maps and everything, but the whole concept was the same. Yeah. I mean, technically the whole concept behind any first person shooter is essentially the same. I mean, you have a gun. You have people you have to kill, and you shoot them, and then they die. Right. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of crossed between, like, I really love playing Call of Duty games because, like, I'll admit, like, I keep going back to playing the games. Like, I have Black Ops 2 that I still play to this day. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, yeah, I understand, like, people are getting fatigued from Call of Duty. Like, they want something more out of their games. And, like, like the whole kill streak thing is cool, but, like, after a while, it's like, all right. Like, I got blown up by, like, the fifth predator drone already in this one match like i'm kind of sick of this like i feel that way too but at the same time it's like call of duty has such a huge and dedicated fan base like it's like it's almost like a sports title where it's like madden has a yearly release and people yep. pick that game up all the time even though they barely change anything with yeah. call of duty they they do change i mean i granted they don't change enough to make the game completely different but they do change enough where it's like, all right, this feels a little bit different than, like, the Treyarch version of this game. Yeah. And so, like, you know, you have certain abilities where, like, Dolphin Dive or, like, you know, diving. Like, some of the stuff, they're like, oh, you can slide and vault over objects now. It's like, guys, Battlefield has been doing that for a long time. <laughs> I mean, yeah. anytime you're going to be doing a yearly release of something, it just gets tedious. Like, it does. It does. even Assassin's Creed. Like, yeah. Assassin's Creed 2, great. The next one had a little bit more. Okay, same game. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, then Revelations once again. Yeah. Same game. Yeah. And then the new one came much. along, and it it had was much larger and had <clears> more going on. Yeah. But I never finished it because I got bored with it because it's the same game I've been playing. That's another problem. For f- like I, five I, years. It took me way too long to get to my objectives. Like I was yeah. going through the snow, like running and shit. I'm like, this is cool and pretty, but I just want to go assassinate someone. <laughs> That's yeah. All I want. I definitely like the um, whole zombie thing that was part of that game. That that was probably my favorite thing to play in that entire game. Assassin's Creed? Oh, I thought we're so... I'm sorry. I missed that whole thing. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I, what? I was still in the whole COD thing. I was lost in oh, thought yeah. for a minute. I'm sorry. No, that's <laughs> totally fine. The I was just trying just... to segue back into COD. That's all. No. <laughs> See, it's smooth. That was smooth. <laughs> just speaking of Assassin's Creed, how about those zombies? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> <It's legit. laughs> I mean, Abstergo can do anything. I don't see why we can't have zombies. There you go. I mean, I I like um I like zombies mode a lot. I think it's a, a really fun game mode. Uh, but they're not gonna bring it back for every Call of Duty for some reason. Like they know it's so popular that some people buy it just to play zombies mode, and they're like, no, you know, we're not gonna play this game. It's not realistic enough or something. Like really, running after people, guns blazing with a knife, and hitting them with a the knife is realistic, really. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I I think I might get Call of Duty um, Ghosts. I care less about the dogs, and they have female gamers now. I'm a female characters in the game, which is cool. But like, why hasn't that already been in the game? Yeah. The I don't know. <clears throat> a lot they of only, people... they only took away "Don't Ask, Don't Tell" like a few years ago, so that might be a reason why. As far as the military goes, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so like. It's not like women are like super represented <laughs> in the military or anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, that's a problem all the time. Yeah. It's, it's like a real world problem. problem. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Go me. Go you. Ed- educated. All right. <laughs> that's legit. Yeah. Um, so, we're there a lot of topics on the agenda. <laughs> Xbox One, we heard there was a rumor that it got delayed, and in certain certain territories. Well, they're is... saying the same thing about the PS4 too. Really? So, yeah. Huh. Well, yeah. The PS4 is only going to be available in certain territories when it, on for 2013. Yes. Um, I think Japan is one of the places that will not be able to get the game until uh, it, get the console until 2014, which is it interesting because it's yeah. being developed in Japan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it know. sells more in America and Europe. So. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. They should have unlimited supplies. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Because <laughs> <laughs> it will never happen. 
<laughs> like realistically. <laughs> but yeah, unlimited supplies. I'm so down with that. I just give it away for free then. Yeah, pff, shit. I'm basically waiting it for free. I got a hookup. No, I didn't get a hookup at all. I just got a bunch of gift cards. <laughs> I was like, yes, I can get a PS4. Nintendo. Um, God bless Nintendo, really. But their stance on indie development is a little bit different than Western, Westerners' stance on indie development. Um, they're going to allow Western developers to create content for free on the Wii U as opposed to Japanese indie developers. Once again, that's so very strange. Like, why would you, why would you do that? <laughs> What are they know. afraid of? I really in don't know. Their own country. Like <laughs> I, I don't I don't I know what I it don't is. Have words. Japanese tentacle porn. <laughs> what? <laughs> if they had creative freedom to do whatever the fuck they wanted, there'd be a lot more tentacle <laughs> porn games. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's because there are more like I don't know. More people in Japan that will pay more for video games? I don't know. That's that's all I can think of. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand it. I feel like they... What the fuck, Japan? Like, <laughs> seriously. Like, I think I'm going to segue into one of the hot topics where, where, where we talk about um, Japan, like, making that transition to release more of its games over to the Western side. Like, apparently, there is a Gundam Unicorn game only in Japan, and I didn't know about this until like I looked like I wonder what good games are out there, and it's like no, none of them are in the U.S. that are actually any good. Yep, there's yeah. a whole bunch of them in Japan that just will not come to the U.S. Yeah. My roommate owns one of those. One of the bad ones or one of the good ones? One of the good ones from Japan. Which one? He is he, it? he gets a bunch of Japanese games. I don't know. I don't remember. See, that sounds awesome, but I can't read Japanese. Yes. Like yeah. I I I just can't. <laughs> I would like to. But I don't know. They like Japan used to be the king of making video games and now it's like they have gems. Like they have those rare games that are like really awesome and like Nintendo has like a lot of first party titles that are like really awesome, but like other than that, like they they missed a step on like such important things like Atlas games like Dark Souls and uh, Dragon's Crown. Again, they neither of those games have voice chat. We're in a yeah. day and age where communication and collaborative gaming stuff is happening like all the time and like we're we're entering that new age where it's even more common for it to happen. And it's like, yeah, we're just not gonna implement any of that stuff within our games. It, we're just gonna stay behind all the time, basically. I also find it really strange when you still get games that have like only one language of vo- of vocals in it and they release different versions for different countries when these are on Blu-ray discs. Like you could not put enough stuff on a Blu-ray disc. Yeah. Like you can fit it there, I promise. Yeah. You won't lose anything. <laughs> like you could probably fit like a library on a Blu-ray disc. Seriously. I don't know. They I love you Japan. I I want to visit you in the next couple of months. I think March I think I'm trying to go to Japan. But there are certain things that I wish you would just fix. <laughs> this is one of them. I think it's getting kind of dark in my head. Uh, is that, is that helpful? Is that help? No, probably not. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Next topic. Um, we already talked about the Joel Japan thing. And bring games over. And this was, this was a topic for the last podcast that, that ended up not... Uh, going through because of the Skype thing, which reminds me, I should probably, but that's all recorded. (laughs) (laughs) So, at what point do we stop accepting BS we hear from the big three, in terms of, like, the stuff that we hear, like, for example, Microsoft saying, like, oh, you need, we need to have this this certain way, because if it doesn't do it this way, it won't work at all. Like, we can't just flip a switch and say we're getting rid of all this DRM, and then they do. Like, and then uh, Nintendo, for example, uh, Super Smash Bros. is not having a story mode or cinematic cutscene because they don't want people spoiling the story mode. That, that's not a thing. That's yeah. not a thing that's acceptable at all. Like that's. Well, well like Masahiro Sakurai is like kind of finicky. Like he saw how people were playing um, Melee and he added the trip system into Brawl because he didn't want people to do the fucking uh, the dancing, you know. No, I don't know. 
Okay. <laughs> so like when they were playing like when they were playing like a tournament version melee. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what it's called, but it's like it's called it, it's ba- it's something dancing where you move back and forth like kind of like psych out your opponent. Oh you know, yeah, fast, yeah. Go into wave dash and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he installed the trip system into Brawl so people would be less inclined to do that. Yeah. Why? Because he didn't like the way people were playing melee. Huh. Yeah. I mean, so how do you that, feel about this? I don't, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I still love that game. Brawl is dope. But there are some people that are just like, I can't play I can't play Smash Bros. anymore. I can't play Brawl. Like, they just, they couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Like, because they would trip all the time. Because they were doing the fucking, they, they couldn't, like, dance anymore. Mm. So, um, he's like, he's like a really, like, picky dude. Or or he's like strict. I don't I don't really know. I, I understand where he's coming from, like it's like seeing how like uh new games always get like leaked and shit and he said it was yeah, he didn't he you know it was like spoiling the surprise. Like I just so watched you, it on my Nintendo. I still don't uh, understand though. That that's so like a 3DS. <laughs> what? That's that that's still so like nonsensical. Like these are the people that are buying your games. So right. because you don't like the way that they're acting, you're just gonna take out the thing that they like? Like Yeah. Right? They, be, you still need to sell your game. Like right. Yeah, no, but he knows he's gonna sell it because it's it's so big anyway. He, it's just like uh he said something along the lines like um like uh when when you have these things out or yeah when you have things like that like the first time that they see it it's like really big and important to the player, it's like like nothing. Like it takes away from that experience when it's leaked and shit like that. So right. um, they just did away with the thing altogether, so that wouldn't happen. That's basically it. He didn't want the the game's appeal, like when you first play it, when you first see it, to be a uh, leaked and shit. So that's why he did it. There's no story mode anymore, anyway. Though that's the thing. It's like yeah, but all the characters have intro videos now, so it's like they have their own stories, like before you pick them. And shit. But I mean, that's so, the same uh, argument that you can make that none of that will have any impact because people will leak it anyway. Well, that was the, that was the point because these videos are supposed to be like kind of segue into the game. Like they, it works better with social media. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, it works. It like works better with social media because you make these small videos that people get to see. that will build up hype towards the game instead of leaks that are supposed to be, like, a part of the game and only supposed to be seen when the game is purchased and played and not, like, to detract from the game. That, um, that, that kind of makes sense. But yeah, it would have been better if they did both. Like, if they had, like, those story modes that were, like, well, preludes to the game coming out, for example, those little, like, story videos. Well, that's what those videos are, yeah. And then and, they'll probably and then be longer. In, in the, the story game. mode, have that be a completely different experience. Like, I think if they did both, that would have been even better. I mean, like... Like for me, for example, I there are certain games like when Metal Gear comes out, I am not watching anything regarding that unless it's a review because I don't want to have anything ruined for me. So and that's 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 the thing. Like, I can have that choice that though. There's that yeah. choice. So there's yeah, but like, like some people, some people just some people aren't you, Will. Some, <laughs> some it, people aren't you. Awesome as me, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> that that was basically it. It was on the fucking the direct or. Uh, Whatever, a Nintendo Direct, yeah. Uh, well, there's a video on the fucking eShop on my 3DS, and he's talking about it, and I just watched it last night, so, uh, yeah. Okay, Phoenix. Okay. Anyway. At least we have some kind of context as to why he made that decision as opposed to it just kind of like, we don't want story mode because we don't want people in the menu. Like, yeah. it's really obnoxious. Uh and we talked about if gamers are getting tired of any releases, which is kind of the case. I mean, the thing is, Call of Duty and Battlefield... I mean, Battlefield's different because it comes out for a few years. But, like, Call of Duty... Everyone says they're getting tired of the releases for Call of Duty, and then another one comes out, and they sell more than the last time. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't understand. I don't... Are, is it just, like, there's, there's some people who are buying consoles only to play the next Call of Duty game. And Madden. And Madden, like that's a shame because there's so many other great games that are out there, but uh, power to them, I guess. I mean, again, I like Call of Duty games, so I'm not like I'm in the minority here where I'm like, yeah, I'm, I kind of want to play the next one, but I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel, I feel it. Like, I feel that fatigue a little bit. It's like, oh, another Call of Duty game. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. What are your thoughts in terms of what Sony can do 
to revive the Vita. I think that they need more games that are Vita exclusive. Okay. That aren't just PSN games. Because right now, the Vita has a lot of games, but like 80% of them are exactly the same as their PS3 counterparts. And you don't get the Vita game. It's not like PlayStation All-Stars where you get the Vita game when you buy the PS3 version. It's like, you got to buy them both. And why would I buy it on on the, the, the handheld? Like, yeah. So I think that they need to sort of make more... They need to make more titles that are just for Vita. Well, you touched on a really important thing for me because I think one of the biggest things for me is as pushing cross by because what we know for PS4 you'll be able to stream gameplay from your PS4 onto your Vita um, yeah if, apparently it, depending on where what the circumstances are you might be able to do that anywhere if you're over a Wi-Fi connection so if I'm yeah. at work and I'm on my lunch break like I can play a PS4 game on my Vita like that is so amazing. that means you need to leave the game in your PS4 and you need to leave your PS4 on well you don't have to have the PS4 on because technically I think it's like always it's always I don't know the details, <laughs> but that the potential for something like that is pretty amazing. And yeah. I think if they had cross buy for the existing PS3 games, like Dragon's Crown, for example, like this is a no brainer. That should be a cross buy game. Yeah. What 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 needs to happen in order for that to happen? Like just let it's, me it's know. up to the developers because when the developers agree to cross buy, they're essentially saying we're not going to make any money from this Vita game. But at the same time, it means that if people bought it on the Vita. Or does it work the other way around, or does it only work on that? Version? It only works that when you buy the PS3, you get the Vita, because Vita games are cheaper. Mm. Or even if it was, wasn't was a cross-buy, it was like, buy it for PS3 and then pay like $20 to unlock it for the Vita. Something like that, I would totally be down for. Cause it's like, yeah. I mean, yeah, technically I am getting the same game. I'm having to pay for it twice, but like I can have that experience both on the go and at home. Like I would pay a little bit more to do that. Sony also needs to like change their memory cards. Memory cards for the Vita are absurdly priced. 90. Like, absolutely absurdly priced, which means because most of their games on the Vita are PSN games, like you can't play them because it's like eighty dollars for a thirty-two gigabyte card. It's like ninety. It's like ninety-four dollars yeah. for a thirty-two gig card. Yeah, it's, it's that's, ludicrous. That's crazy. I I feel like they just they're just dicking us. Really. They they definitely are. I mean, it's the exact same thing as a flash card. It's just shaped differently. Yeah, exactly. And what the Sony fuck? trademark so nobody else is allowed to make it. I um I had a run in with a uh, someone from someone counterfeiting memory sticks. I bought a like a two gig stick once when I had a, a PSP, and they sent it over, and I was like, oh, this is a cool little like gold case. They put it in. This is awesome. Like I opened it up and like I put it in the PS the PSP and like it read it for a second and then it was like there is no card here there's nothing there I was like what do you mean there's nothing there I just paid for this card and it is a fucking memory stick and then I, like I looked at my one of my memory sticks in that one and then like I looked at the, there was like a the tiniest little difference in the in the in the whatever the fuck it was the bottom part that actually the information reads from I was like yeah I just got dicked <laughs> like this is insane like there's counterfeiting going on because your technology is too fucking expensive yeah. yes if this wouldn't be a problem if they would be reasonable about the way they're handling their business with the Vita and with the PSP like that should never be a problem I think the the, um, the DS you can use regular SD cards with that can't you what was that you, with the, the DS you can use I think it's either standard or like mini SD cards with that that are standard throughout all yes. the small devices yep. yeah you can use standard ones, yeah. What the fuck? And I understand that they did it because they wanted, like, proprietary technology uh, so that the Vita can access it better in a way that's, like, better for it to run. But it's still absurd. I have the same gripe about iPhones. Like, I love iPhones. I mean, we worked at Apple together, so, like, we both have, an, you know, we like iPhone. But they they have proprietary systems where it's, like, if I go to work... And I just need to have a charger. No one else has an iPhone charger, but they all have Blackberries or Androids. I'm fucked. Yeah. Like, I have to use that specific type of charging port. And it's a pain in the ass. I mean, you could just use what everyone else is using. Or you can do use your own thing. But, I mean, it's working for Apple because they're making billions of dollars. But Sony is not. <laughs> no. 
And uh, I don't know. They, they're talking about lowering the price of the Vita, which I think would help. But more than that, they really need to lower the price of the accessories. Also, a Vita charger. If you need to replace a Vita charger, um, I have like a power bag. Mm-hmm. So it's a like a backpack with a battery Those are pack. awesome. Yeah. So I got the cord that I thought I'd be able to charge my Vita with because it's the cord that fits in the Vita and goes into USB. But you need both halves. Like you need the part that plugs into the wall or the part that plugs into a car. Oh. Uh, Sony has made it so that it won't work without the whole thing, and each part is like twenty five dollars. What the fuck? So you seriously? You and need my, to buy it from them. And my uh, other crap about Sony is like for it to work properly. With the PS3, I have the Elgato. Uh, game capture card which i've been doing like all my gameplay on and they have a proprietary encryption code for their hdmi input so i can't even use the full native hdmi to record gameplay i have yeah. to i have to go through um i have to go through this, this other loop and use sub hd in order to capture the gameplay like really sony like do you need to go to this extent to fuck with us this bad like yeah <laughs> I hope that changes with the next generation. Like, I, I, I just can't do it anymore. I mean, I think Sony's problem is that they, they want to be sort of like high quality luxury good, mm-hmm. but they want to be for everyone, and it's not working. Yeah, it doesn't like go you both can't, ways. You can't do both. Right. Apple does, but Apple does because they're Apple. Right. Like, Sony isn't Apple. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Sony style stores fail. All like, the time. All there's, the time. There's no like, reason to ever go to those stores. There was one in cop. Is it even still there anymore? I think it's no, still there, yeah. There's one in Copley that no one is ever in. Like, nope. every time I've gone by, it was just like, <laughs> it's another empty Sony, Sony Power, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think they're ever hiring because no one's ever going there. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, weird. It's bad. Okay. And for the last part of the Black Oni Podcast, Episode 8, unless you guys have anything that you want to add to the topics... I'm good. No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> what are you hoping is going to happen in the next Gamescom? The next what? Gamescom. So next week, Gamescom is happening, and it's in it's in Germany, I think, somewhere in Europe. I want a date for my PS4. Yeah, it's getting really close to when they're supposed to release for them to have not told us when they're releasing. Like, even if it's November. That's still only a few months away, and that's that's stupid. Like I should know when this thing that I had to pre-order months ago to be able to get it <laughs> when I pre-ordered it for. I should know that. I want to know so I can know when to take my vacation time. Because there you go. <laughs> yeah, I can I'm just about. put it on my syllabus. Like, by the way, kids, I'm at a conference <laughs> this week. This is why I want to be a teacher. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I would. I would love to have a release date. I mean, that yeah. would that would be ideal. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, Shazene, if you're as excited about the PS4 as I am. Uh, <laughs> Man. Man. I mean, uh, no. No. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> that's honest. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what other games are gonna start making for the PS4. Seeing what else, because we were talking about earlier how like. Everything in video games has pretty much already been done. I'm looking forward to seeing if there's a game that's going to come out that's completely different. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm looking forward for the PS4. So just a little bit of change, I guess. It's Octodad. Octo. Oh, I love that game. <laughs> oh, so you played it before? Yeah, I've played it before. I I on my old YouTube channel, I did a couple episodes, but they just came out with that newer one. I think you do have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was actually watching, I don't know if you guys are familiar with PewDiePie on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, but he just, (laughs) I think everybody's familiar with him now, but, uh, he had just put out a couple of videos of that. I haven't personally played the newest one, but I like games like that. Like, I don't know what genre of gaming that is. Like indie, indie, indie games. Yeah. I also also decided the other, earlier this week that I want a next gen Katamari game. Mm. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Nah. Yes. I want a Katamari <laughs> game that's that's coming out that's actually good. Like the Vita one yeah. was not good. The Xbox 360 one was really not good. I want a good <laughs> Katamari game. Yeah. Heck yes. Knack is going to be like a, a platformer Katamari type of game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a hybrid. Think... Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right? Just blew your mind, man. <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense to me because... You just get the fucking kind of mind. He's like, all right, go roll up the world. I'm like, all right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, like, I, I never got huge into Katamari, but I did play, I think, the first one for PlayStation 2. And I had a lot of fun playing it. Um, but I didn't, I didn't like, love it as much as everyone else loved it. Like, I remember X-Play was out. And, like, that was all they talked about for, like, a good two weeks. Like, Katamari yeah. Damashi, Katamari Damashi. I was like, why is this game so awesome? And I played it, and I was like, all right, it's cool. It's cool, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I keep the PS3 one, like at all times because if I'm ever having the worst day it's what I can do for like 20 minutes and just not be miserable like yeah. that's legit like with that music and sort of the gameplay yeah I get frustrated because I can never beat any of my old records but like while I'm playing I'm happy yeah that's legit though there's, there's a lot of indie games that are that are coming out and have come out in the past couple of years like Flower for example is another great indie game where it's like it's completely different than anything else you've played before but it's like yeah. It's like yeah. this like tranquil scenario yep. and like Journey, for example, another one. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> this Wusa. <laughs> yeah. This this yeah, at, Ga- at Gamescom I also want to see a working PS4. Like mm. yeah. they've shown mm-hmm. prototypes and not working models, and Sony won't even let anybody show the back of the system. Now they have. It's not a working model. Oh, they working still model. haven't shown yeah. a working model yeah, though. That's true. They've all been prototypes and then like I want to see what it, I want to see a working model. Yeah, it comes out in a few months. You have to have it, or else it's not actually coming out in a few months. Like, <laughs> Seriously, I want to see it. Seriously, um, I'm going to be at New York Comic Con. Uh, for those of you at home, and for you guys, if you're going to be at New York Comic Con as well, um, I'm not going to have a table this year, which sucks. But um, I will be there, and I will. I think the first place I'm going to go to is the gaming section because, like, now that I'm so embedded into the gaming culture of the interwebs like it's my civic duty now to report on anything i can i can get my hands on and so if i can play the xbox one and the ps4 to to like feel the controls in my hands and like really get a chance to play some of those titles and uh, yeah. that, that's gonna be my mission i really want to do it and if the game but the thing is though if this console releases in october i'll only get a chance to play it before everyone else for like two weeks <laughs> yeah so well, New York Comic Con is what like the twenty first this year, is it of October? I heard rumor that the PS4 is going to be releasing October twenty first. So I not twenty first. Some more that said like November or something. But yeah, uh, there was um there was an advertisement in the Saudi Arabian um I guess channel uh, where it was like yeah it's coming out in October twenty first or something. And I was or twentieth uh, or whatever, and I was just like whoa wait a minute here and like apparently like they. It was. I don't know exactly what it was. I'll probably link you guys later. But they they apparently have word that that's what's going to happen in Saudi Arabia. So I can't imagine it coming to Arabia before it comes to the U.S. Hmm. Just well, in that case, Comic Con may be when it releases, and you're going to have a a dilemma. Yeah, because I'm like my whole mission for he- being here is now to just go check out the other stuff. Not only that, but you're going to have a PS4 delivered to your apartment, and you're not going to be able to play it because you're going to be in New York. <laughs> oh no! Oh we were... no! <laughs> I would, I would die a little bit. I think, I think that's what would happen. I would, I wouldn't know what to do because, like, New York Comic Con only happens once a year, and the PS4 release only happens once ever. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hope you guys had a great time. Um, during this podcast session. I did. Good, Good stuff. <laughs> I did too. Um, I hope you guys at home have enjoyed this podcast session. Um, there's going to be way more content on the way. Um, when you guys get a chance, go check out Miss Chazenet. There's going to be an annotation around her face. <laughs> it's also going to be one in the description. <laughs> um, Dan will be starting a channel uh, soon enough. Soon. 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 Maybe like the start of 2014. Say that again, Kev? I like the hand gestures you guys have going on. Yeah, like, <laughs> feel like I need to invent one. <laughs> like transforming hands or whatever. Um, and then check out all the other stuff on my channel. I have gaming, art, and comedy related stuff. So do that. Be awesome. Have a great day. Game on. Jay Blaze out. <laughs>